This segment is brought to you by GoToAssist. When it comes to gaming right now, do you have either got the casual smudgy screen or the hardcore? Actually, this is a pink controller. Hey. Uh, pink controllers can be hardcore too. Yes, it can. You're here to marry them both. Yes. Are you going to pronounce them? Um, BFFs? Husband and wife. Yeah, there you go. I was gonna say husband and wife, and I was like, but it's pink, so <laughs> whatever. That, I guess who that cares? Could be the wife, Changes the yeah. whole gender boundaries thing. There's whatever. a lot of guys at the conventions who get the pink rubber ducky or yeah. the purple one. So. I love doing that too. I do too. Yeah. So yeah, my whole goal today was actually to get the PlayStation controller to pair Bluetooth-wise with the Nexus 7 and be able to play a game like normal and not have any issues. Well, I love this idea because, you know, there's so many great emulators for yeah. Android now. Uh, there's, you know, you could do PlayStation 1 games, no problem. Mm -hmm. And how natural is it to, like, have a 7-inch tablet and a PlayStation controller and play some ah, PlayStation games? so much fun! You know? So, first off, it was really important that we had one of these little guys. Oh, the OTG. Yes, the OTG. So, basically, the terminology the USB OTG cables, these are OTG devices that can play host to another USB device. And they can also drop the host role whenever they're plugged into a USB host device as well. Um, OTG cables have a micro A plug on one side and a micro B plug on the other. Uh, apparently, according to most terminology, they can't have two plugs of the same type on them. But <clears> we totally... Unless you're a cause cable. We totally changed that with our uh, cause cables in the hack shop, which good, are good awesome. Stuff, good stuff. Yes. So the micro A plug, it has the fifth pin on it. This is called the ID pin, and it's grounded. And then on the B plug, there's a floating ID pin. And the A side is the power supply, which is the reason for that grounded plug. And then the B side is the power consumer. Mm -hmm. So the B side always brings in, or always takes the power. Aha. So. Very Transference important. of energy, and actually, yes. this is our. Uh, we did not look too closely into the spec when we first got into making those cables. Yeah, cables. we got a whole bunch of cables that just kind we of. We have port. a box of cables that have a floating yeah. fifth pin on both sides. That's okay. Nobody's OTG, nobody's power. It's yeah, yeah. but it uh, the idea is you basically just short the fifth pin mm -hmm. to like I just go with the shielding because mm -hmm. there you go, it's grounded. Um, yeah. And then on like the other side, you just don't do anything. Like your little hacked cable, that's kind of. A, Kind of jewelry when you plug it in. <laughs> Dude. Well, I mean, that's... Oh, do you have it on you? No, but that's oh, what okay. these are for, you know? <laughs> Need to fix my cable. <laughs> right. Anyway, yes. Okay, so the first thing we had to do was go over to this website called wugfresh.com, and we needed to root my Nexus 7. Uh, when we first tried to do this hack, we actually ran into a problem with Bluetooth pairing the uh, PlayStation controller. It worked at first with whenever it was plugged in with its little nice little micro USB cable. I guess this is micro. That's a mini. Mini USB yeah, and cable. And that turns it into micro. Yes. So it worked at first whenever I plugged it into the Nexus 7, but it wouldn't pair Bluetooth. And I had so many issues with this. Yeah, that's the thing is like the stock ROM uh, mm -hmm. doesn't support the PlayStation just, 3 it controller doesn't over understand. Bluetooth. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it is kind of great though that, you know, Google or whoever had the foresight to say, hey, we're going to support game controllers right out of the box uh, yeah. by USB. And so if you don't want to go through the process of routing, most of what you're talking about is going to apply even if you're just using it just plugged right in with an OTG adapter. And that's kind of cool because I know a lot of people are, especially after like, you know, seeing what ownage can be done with yeah. PDP ADB, don't, maybe they just don't want to root, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so. so it's understandable, but I was still having issues. So I said, okay, so, let's root the Nexus 7. Well, that was a pretty simple process, right? Oh my God, it was so easy. So I downloaded this tool toolkit right off the website and I'll have a link directly to it on our show notes so it's super easy to follow. You just do the initial setup and then you unlock it and the whole time you're following these on-screen directions and then you click this root button and it says, okay, follow these directions, wait for it to boot. And then there you go, you're completed. Success. See, no, that's exactly it though. There you go, you're completed. No, not success. There's one more step. By the Lock way. Lock it again. Lock yeah. your bootloader again. As, as Cause has demonstrated, you don't want to leave it unlocked. Now, how we'll do you do that? We'll have to go back and do that. Uh, I don't know if the Is tool supports like whole, doing that. Do I have to go in here and do uh, some crazy no, no, stuff? No, you, no, you would use the tool to do that. Oh. You would just lock the bootloader again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That way somebody Let's can't sure. come and cold boot you, or Let's not cold sure boot you, that. but yeah, we will. Hack sure. my thing with an OTG and there a USB go. rubber ducky. Whoop. Mm. Hey, what? stop it. Huh? All right, keep, move on. What? Okay, so the next thing I needed was the six axis controller app. Mm -hmm. When I first downloaded it, I was like, cool, so let's pair it. Oh, this isn't working. Oh, I need to root it. So I rooted the device, downloaded the six axis controller app, and I'll go back to the main menu. Uh, so 
some changes. Want to exit? Yes. Come back a couple of times. Okay, so this is the main screen on the 6-axis controller app. And basically what you have to do is pair your Sony controller with the Nexus. So you plug in the controller, you press start to find the device, and then you just follow the direction. So what I did was plug in the controller. Aha! Hence why we have the OTG cable. Plug this in and then... So I'll flip that on. Aha, and there you go. You have the input method to choose between US Yay! English Android keyboard, the default, and the six axis controller right here. So cool. it identifies it. So that's great. But I also want to make sure that it knows that it's a Sony PlayStation controller and I pair it. Aha. So what I did. You can first, already start using it. Yeah, so you over, can start over using USB. It. See how that's moving the, uh, the menus around? Right. Yeah, that's cool. So at first, what I did was click start right here. And then it would give me a whole bunch of directions down at the bottom, and eventually it would say completed. So I'm good to go. Yay! So you only have to do that once, though, to yeah, pair it. Yeah, you only have to do it once, and then it is paired for good. And then I can unplug the controller, like so, and you'll see it moving around on their screen, like that. Aha! Aha there you go. That? Check it out. Yeah, so we cool. know it works, even on six axis controller. Now, when you first go to a video game after doing this, you're going to find that the controls are totally screwy. Like you, you run, run f straight ahead and on the analog stick, and you're running sideways. And you're like, what? What's wrong with this? And yeah. then you try to hit the gun, and the gun's paired with like, you know, L2 or something. It's not going to work right. You know, it's not normal gameplay. Well, because I mean, isn't the PlayStation controller just emulating touching the screen yeah. for you, I'm, or emulating keyboard? I mean, how many of these games expect yeah. you to like plug in a keyboard? Exactly. So you're having issues, right? So what you have to do is go back into the six axis controller app, click on the menu button, these three little periods at the top, click preferences, and then choose touch emulation. So if you click on touch, touch emulation, you want to create or edit a touch profile. So edit touch profile and then double tap for menu. So you double tap on here and you can create a new one if you wanted to by adding your own keys. So add button. So you can oh, add buttons. Oh, there you go. R2, R2. So I could choose the analog stick, and I can move it around on here wherever I want it to actually touch with Bluetooth on so the screen. So now when I move this, yes. that's See? where that's going to be. Yep, oh, exactly. cool. Now I already did a mapping feature on here. So I'll go ahead and exit that one and start a new one. I guess I could just load it from straight from there. So load dead trigger. So this is my dead trigger one. How did you get the image to be Isn't like that? Isn't that awesome? So there's this really, really helpful forum post online. We had to look around for it a little bit. It was um, Nexus 7 PlayStation controller mapping profiles, and I'll put the link in the show notes for that as well. They have a list of download, downloaded mapping uh, .rars, and then they also have screenshots if you want to do it that way. Okay. So I saved the screenshot. I emailed it to myself on here on this Google uh, Gmail app, and then I just uh, saved the image onto my, onto my Gmail. So in here, I was I guess able you to double-click. take a screenshot, too. You yeah. could, like, I you think take on the Nexus, it's like power button and volume or something. Yeah. So I, so, so I you got just my import screenshot, the image? and then back here, I put edit background. OK. And then I just edited the picture, and I was able to move it around so that it would match oh. the game, the actual game controls. And, and so this is a that, screenshot of the game. This is a screenshot of the game. And these little controls, I can move them around and have them match the little icons on the image. So if I move this, for instance, I can see that there's actually one underneath it. And yeah. You just need to put that on top of there. Yep. Put this guy on top of so there. Like that one's the start button, which uh, pauses the game. So now when I press the start button, it'll think I'm pressing right there and pause the game, et cetera, et cetera. So after I've done that, I want to make sure that I save it. So I save, dead trigger. Now, if you're making a new one, we found out the hard way that since you have it paired with this, there's no keyboard well, on the screen. Well, it thinks this <laughs> is the keyboard, but this isn't creating keystrokes. Yeah, there's no keystrokes. So before you actually paired it, uh, cut on the six axis program, you need to plug it in with the OTG cable and type in the keyboard name. Or I can imagine, you, that, remember that pop-up just kept on coming up and saying, hey, uh, what do you want to use, the Android keyboard or yeah. your PlayStation so controller? So you can change it. Yeah, if, if yeah. You, but you can't change it once you're already in here. Yeah, once you're it's in here and you've late. already made your profile all beautiful. Because so it's all if you screen. have that problem, just you know, grab one of your 
nice handy dandy keyboards and plug it in with an OTG cable and you can type it in. Oh, dude, I just had a total idea for a hack that has nothing to do with video games here. But if Paul, for instance, yeah. were to use a VNC app on this, uh, he would be able to like VNC into his Mac, <gasps> right? His Mac has the control software that changes the camera switching. Oh, so if Paul like clicks here, it switches to camera one, Paul clicks there, it switches to camera two, and then he could map the PlayStation controller <laughs> to do those awesome. presses. That would be so cool. Although that's really like is relaying from this to the Nexus through yeah. VNC to Paul's Mac. All so I guess stuff. you would just take out the middle end. But still, it's pretty cool. So if you don't have an image on the back in your six axis controller app for your new mapping configurations, mm -hmm. it might take a few times going back and forth between the game and the six axis uh, controller application to actually get everything correct on your keyboard. So best or to on just take a screenshot controller. and bring it so, in. So yeah, it's easiest to do that. You still have to move the screenshot around in the application to get it perfectly square. Or well, perfectly let's see it. On here. How how uh, how so good let me is save it? That. All right. And then overwrite, overwrite it. Sure. Okay, so we have it ready to go. We're going to click into the game. This is the game right here, and I'll let you try it out. Huzzah! What do I do? Let's so see. click resume. resume. Okay. What's shoot? So shoot is I believe it's the square maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh zombies are getting there me. You go. Oh, I just shot a zombie in the head. Nice. Yes. For your controller and frame. There you go. Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry about that, Paul. Now, can you tell that the configuration is a little bit off? It's like a bit you can stiff. see the mouse down here whenever you're controlling the analog stuff. Yeah, I mean, I can look around this way, I can move this way. Hey, hey mission success. I didn't even right. have to do anything. So that apparently was awesome. it works correctly. There but you go. you'll notice that some of the configurations are a little off. You might have to go in, and even though the image looks perfect, you might have to move it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. But And you can also, which what is nice about six axis is that if you're left handed, or if you're right handed, or if you prefer to have the trigger on the right side or something like that, you can switch it. This which is, is so great. great. It's so nice. I want to play emulators on the bus now. I Yeah, me too. Cool. <laughs> Although then you need a is stand. That, well, but sure, we but get yourself. The nice it. thing is, though, that if you root it, you can go Bluetooth, and yeah. then you don't have that. Then you're not that dork on the bus with the with the cord going to your. And I you know, know there's I know there's a couple of app, apps coming out recently, or an, a couple of tablets coming out that actually have a controller like stuck on it. And oh, it didn't you talk about that one of those on um, App Judgment? I did. Yeah, on App Judgment, I talked about the WikiPad with uh, Anthony Carbo Carboni. And so it has nothing to do with Wikipedia. No, it's just called the WikiPad, okay. and it's an Android tablet, and it has a built-in controller to it. But this is great because you're not spending the extra cash. Well, I could for use a nice my phone. Built-in controller, you can use your phone. Then I could just Isn't have to walk cool? around with a pink controller in my pocket everywhere I go. Ah, oh, that's. You know what? That's okay. Let's go. I'm ready. Let's land. It it means that you're totally you know decent with yourself. You're happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. You're comfortable. Ooh, ooh, yeah. A belt buckle with like a, a big buckle. like. I'm ready to go. Huh? But you have to have it upside down so you can play oh, you're it right, you're at right. the same time. So that I can there look down and play with my... Um, let's <laughs> move on. Oh my so coming God. up soon, we're going to have uh, some awesome email questions from you guys where we talk about sidejacking. But before then, we're going to thank one of our awesome sponsors. We'll be right back. <laughs> In IT, it's challenging enough when your team is all working in the same office, let alone when you're all supporting remote users remotely, as remote is. That's, that's the way that that works. And that's why you need GoToAssist by Citrix. You can take control of your entire IT environment with one simple cloud-based platform. And so with GoToAssist, you can keep track of all your systems, keep them up and running, and keep all of your users supported. You can provide live and unattended support from anywhere. Get this, they've even got an iPad app. So, dude, remote assistance from your iPad. How cool is that? And with GoToAssist monitoring, you get this customizable dashboard that displays all of the performance of your network, your servers, your desktop. So you can have like proactive alerts that say, hey dude, you're running out of space on the C drive on that NT4 server. Maybe it'll say you might want to upgrade your NT4 server. But otherwise, it's like, Take care of those little problems before they become a huge headache. Make yourself look like an IT hero. You know, I've been using GoToAssist uh, products for the last couple of years. And let me tell you, it has saved my bacon when I was doing systems administration work. I wouldn't want to do IT again without it. Uh, they're really easy to use. It sets up in just minutes and it's from Citrix. So, you know, it's like they're a trusted leader in IT. So go ahead and sign up today. They've got a special offer just for us. It's a free trial. Visit GoToAssist.com. Click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HACK5. That's go to assist.com with the promo code HAK5.